Here I shall discuss the latest guidelines on diagnosis and management of Wilson's disease in children given by the European Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition along with reviewing the disease wherever required. So Wilson's disease as we know it is an autosomal recessive condition in which the implicative gene ATP7B is located on the chromosome 13 Q14.3 that is the long arm of chromosome 13. This gene codes for a copper transporting protein in the liver cells which is responsible for incorporation of copper into cellular plasmin, a copper binding protein and biliary copper excretion. The liver cells get overloaded with copper which is then redistributed to other tissues like brain and kidneys. So liver disease can vary from asymptomatic hepatomegaly to cryptogenic cirrhosis and portal hypertension. There are degenerative changes in the brain and case of pleasure ring is seen in the cornea. Now in this regard you must remember that liver disease is the most common manifestation of Wilson's disease in children and it can precede CNS symptoms by at least 10 years. So it is very unusual to CNS symptoms pr to present as the first sign in a child with Wilson's disease. CNS disease is more common in more than 20 years of age group. Also, case of flesher rings are seen in 50% of patients with hepatic disease compared with 95% patients with neurological Wilson's disease. This is because we know that eye is an extension of the brain itself. Then renal deposition manifests as Fanconi syndrome with progressive renal failure and Coombs negative hemolytic anemia can sometimes be the initial presentation which is due to massive release of copper from the damaged liver cells and this is usually fatal without transplantation. This condition is treatable but Wilson's disease can be progressively fatal if it is not treated timely. So Espaghan proposes a three-step approach to diagnosing patients with Wilson's disease. The first step is the following three parameters clinical evaluation, liver biochemistry and measures of copper metabolism. Clinical evaluation should include evaluation for hepatosplenomegaly, ascites and case of flesher rings. One must remember to suspect Wilson's disease even if there are unusual hepatic neurological behavioral or psychiatric manifestations. Next is the liver biochemistry that is complete liver function tests and third is the measure of copper metabolism which includes serum ceruloplasmin and 24 hour urinary copper. It is important to note that serum ceruloplasmin can be falsely elevated in acute inflammatory states and conditions with increased estrogen levels. Ceruloplasmin can normally be decreased in autoimmune hepatitis, celiac disease, familial aceruloplasminemia that is congenital deficiency of the protein ceruloplasmin and some carriers of ATP7B mutation seen in other diseases. So one must be very careful whenever you are interpreting the report of serum ceruloplasmin in these conditions. Also prior to the collection of 24-hour urine sample for copper give two doses of oral penicillamine 12 hours apart because penicillamine increases the excretion of urinary copper. The second step is molecular testing in which the detection of a single mutation in presence of definite symptoms and signs or presence of two mutations in an asymptomatic child are sufficient to diagnose Wilson's disease. The third tire investigation is liver biopsy which is required for quantifying copper deposited in the liver. This is considered as a third line investigation unlike the older AASLD guidelines of Wilson's disease since there is recent stress on non-invasive testing more. But liver biopsy is unreliable in patients with cirrhosis due to variable copper distribution and sampling error. So a Leibniz score is calculated at each step and this algorithm of the first, the second and the third tier investigations is concluded if the score is more than 4 at any step. So what values you must remember to diagnose Wilson's disease? Ceruloplasmin less than 20 mg per deciliter. Serum free copper is more than 1.6 micromole per liter in the initial phases of the disease. Urine copper more than 100 micrograms per day and hepatic copper content more than 250 microgram per gram dry weight of the liver. Now since 
free copper is reliable only in the initial stages you must you can choose to forget this value now acute liver failure in wilson's disease is near fatal and it is a dreaded complication so s paghan proposes three criteria to diagnose acute liver failure which is occurring due to wilson's disease these are hyperbilirubinemia with serum bilirubin more than 17.5 mg per cm low transaminases 100 to 500 international units per liter and low serum alkaline phosphatase also serum alkaline phosphatase to bilirubin ratio less than 1 is considered as a supportive evidence of acute liver failure in wilsons one must screen all the first degree relatives that is parents children and direct siblings screening involves four components that is physical examination liver function test serum ceruloplasmin and atp 7b mutational analysis or haplotype studies the basic premise on which the treatment of wilsons disease is based is limiting copper intake and promoting copper excretion so there are two types of drugs chelators which cause an increase in urinary copper excretion and zinc which impairs gastrointestinal absorption of copper so the chelation therapy includes three drugs there are three drugs for chelation first is dpenicillamine dose is 20 mg per kg bid before meals there is initial neurological worsening in around 10 to 50% of patients being given dpenicillamine and since it is an b6 anti metabolite one may have to supplement b6 along with the administration of dpenicillamine the second drug is triethylene tetramine dihydrochloride also referred to as trientin in short the dose is same 20 mg per kg per day and ammonium tetrathiomolybdate is under investigation for children and has an anti angiogenic property so currently it is not safe then zinc it is impairs the gastrointestinal absorption of copper as i have already told you the dose is 25 mg per dose 8 hourly so you need to remember two things by heart and that is the dose of chelators is 20 mg per kg per day and that of zinc is 25 mg per dose 8 hourly now medical therapy can be divided into two phases In the initial phase asymptomatic patients should be given zinc while symptomatic patients should be given a combination therapy of chelating chelating agent and zinc in the maintenance phase one should give zinc a low copper diet that is avoiding nuts chocolate and liver should be given until there is remission of symptoms and there is normalization of liver enzymes but it is important to remember that this is not done with patients who are on zinc therapy because as it is zinc impairs the absorption of copper also the threshold copper for low copper diet is less than 1 mg per day and normal intake of copper in daily routine is 2 to 5 mg per day now the main indicators of copper balance that is monitoring the treatment is are two first is 24 hour urinary copper the target range being 200 to 500 micrograms per day and the second is non ceruloplasmin bound copper this is a secondary treatment target not the primary one one must also remember to monitor lfts serum copper serum ceruloplasmin urinary copper and physical examination and this has to be done weekly during the first month of therapy then every 1 to 3 months until remission and every 3 to 6 months thereafter The 5-year survival rate with transplantation is 85 to 90%. Indications for transplantation include acute liver failure and decompensated cirrhosis, whereas severe neuropsychiatric disease is a contraindication. A revised King score should be used for prognostication. An extracorporeal liver system, for example, molecular adsorbent recirculating system, can be used as a bridge to transplantation in patients who develop acute liver failure and Wilson's disease. So summarizing as Paghan recommends a three tier approach to diagnosing Wilson's disease first is clinical features plus laboratory markers second is molecular diagnosis and third is liver biopsy in this regard you have to remember three numbers these are ceruloplasmin less than 20 urine copper more than 100 and hepatic copper more than 250 treatment is given in two phases in the initial phase you give chelation therapy plus zinc in symptomatic patients and zinc alone in asymptomatic patients 
and in maintenance phase you give zinc and the dose to remember is 20 mg per kg per day for chelators commonly used that is d penicillamine and trienti and the dose of zinc is 25 mg per dose 8 hourly as regards prognosis wilson's disease is a treatable cause of acute liver failure but it can be potentially fatal if it is untreated timely so thank you so much for watching and please do share the knowledge thank you